Hollywood has had us re-examining the nature of our reality for years now. But maybe it's not all science fiction. Increasing numbers of thinkers, philosophers, and scientists are claiming that our world might not be as authentic as we think it is. This is Unveiled, and today we'll be detailing seven extraordinary reasons why we're probably living in a simulation. Are you a fiend for facts? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Unveiled for more clips like this one and ring the bell for more fascinating content. The modern concept of a simulation theory was laid out and popularized by the philosopher Nick Boostrom in the early 2000s. In general, Boostrom's idea suggests that perhaps none of this is real, that it could be viewed as highly likely that we're the product of some kind of reality replica. Various explanations have been put forward as to how this could work. It could be, for example, that somewhere out there are future humans running an elaborate sim to experience how their own society came to be, and then that we populate that sim. As for motive, this supremely advanced civilization could be simply charting their own history to see what came before them, or they could perhaps be examining how their history might have changed at various points and key moments in time, and we exist along just one specific timeline of their past, living within the parameters set by our unknown programmer. In either case, everything we are is purely the creation of something else far more advanced than us. The tech mogul Elon Musk builds on this idea, though, pointing to our progression with things like video games and VR as potential proof that the sim exists, regardless of the reason for it. The argument goes that, as we're already striving to create the most realistic and immersive experiences just in the name of entertainment, it makes sense that we'd eventually do this for other purposes, too. From this perspective, whole universe simulations might even be deemed as not just possible, but probable in the future. It only really depends on how advanced humanity can become. But an idea is one thing, and physical evidence is another. So, if we look around us, are there any real-life indicators or even hints that the sim is real? For many, the most obvious starting points are the various limitations that our universe appears to have. The apparent edges as to what is possible. The Planck length, for example, is used to record the smallest sizes possible in the cosmos. So, some have asked whether these extremely small units could exist like pixels do in a computer sim, with reality built and rendered out of an incalculable number of them. There are similar ideas in other fields, too, like string theory, supporters of which claim the bottommost level of reality is made up of vibrating strings. It's just that for simulation theorists, instead of string, there are bits of data, and these tiny bits are arranged into reality-building, life-enabling, matrix-confirming code. The speed of light is another point of interest. We know that at approximately 186,000 miles per second, it can't be exceeded. But some sim theorists would ask, what if that's because that speed is actually the rate at which our program processes information? If that were true, then if we were to somehow travel faster than light at the edge of the observable universe, then we could wind up traveling into somewhere that hasn't been fully programmed yet somewhere outside of the simulation. There are even some suggestions that these kinds of sim-dictated boundaries could also be cited as the reason why we haven't made contact with an alien civilization yet. With sim theory, our apparent loneliness could just be because that's what corresponds with the code our controllers chose to run. This idea of choice also leads us into another increasingly popular theory on reality, however, the multiverse. For advocates of the multiverse, there is not simply one version of the universe, but an infinite number of potential universes. It's just that we only inhabit one of them. Thinking about this concept through the lens of sim theory, it could be that the multiverse is representative of multiple versions of a sim being run with different variables and parameters every time. In one, human history plays out the same, except Rome never falls. In another, JFK was never shot. And in another, the internet was never invented. In yet another, Homo sapiens never establishes itself on planet Earth at all. It all depends on what the sim controllers choose to make happen. The really interesting thing about the multiverse theory in general, though, is that if it is true in any capacity, then the chances of simulation theory also being true dramatically improve as well. Now, in any of the actually real universes that the multiverse could contain, history could lead to the development of an ancestor sim and the subsequent recreations of infinite simulated universes from there on out. It could happen in one multiverse reality, or two, or ten, or one hundred. 
But wherever it does happen, the number of sims possible would be pretty much infinite. And suddenly, across the vast plains of a multiverse, simulated realities quickly outnumber true realities. It's a rabbit hole which goes infinitely deep, and it's far more likely that we're somewhere down it rather than standing at the entrance. So if the multiverse is real, then we probably do live in a simulation. That's true, but it's also a big if. So what about with our own real-world experiences? Are there signs of a simulation just in everyday life as we know it? Well, a phenomenon so often thrown into the debate is the collective false memory scenario known as the Mandela Effect. It's when large numbers of people misremember things in a small or big but similar way. Such as with Nelson Mandela, after whom the effect is named, whom many reportedly remember dying in prison when in reality he did not. This type of humanity-wide error is difficult to explain, with many falling back on a familiar refrain that it's a glitch in the matrix. On a smaller scale, similar explanations have been put forward for deja vu. For sim theorists, though, instances like these could represent some sort of imprint, transferred over from one sim to another. In many ways, then, it might be said that all of this is just a matter of perspective. But therein lies arguably the biggest reason of all why life isn't actually real, our own perspective and our own subjectivity. Everyone's subjective experiences really are a simulation, when you think about it, of objective reality interpreted by our brains, by our minds and by our senses. Our brains constantly use our past experiences to interpret, understand, and compute the world around us. It's this disconnect between what we perceive as real and what is real that's part of why memes like the white and gold or blue and black dress or the Yanni Laurel sound blew everybody's minds. How could it be that we all interpreted them so differently? Well, really, there are more than a few explanations as to how those particular memes worked. But the general idea does ring true for all of life and the universe as we know it. We see one thing when often we're looking at another. In physics, what's known as the observer effect describes how the act of observing something can alter the state that the thing exists in. It's especially important at the subatomic level, where experiments have shown that under a microscope, particles can suddenly behave like waves and vice versa, whenever they're observed. On some level, then, we can say that reality is only real when we look at it. And for some sim theorists, this could be crucial, the suggestion being that the observer effect is proof of large-scale, infinitely detailed rendering that's happening all of the time, all around us, allowing us to perceive life as real when really, it's a creation, a simulation. In a video game, the levels aren't often fully loaded until a playing character is directed to look at them or move near them. And that, according to some interpretations of the theory, could be what's happening with us in our lives on Earth. The popular scientist Neil deGrasse Tyson has previously put the odds that we're living in a simulation at 50-50. But ultimately, it might be impossible to prove either way. And even then, it could be argued by a diehard sim theorist that any proof that we're not in a simulation could itself have been simulated. The real secret might be to just stop worrying about it and to enjoy the world we do live in, whether it's a mind-bending, existence-shattering matrix or not. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments, check out these other clips from Unveiled, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content.